Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here. I hope you're doing well, and if you're not, I hope you are soon. Okay, today on the channel, we are taking a look at Stalagbite, the Dwarven quest for gold and glory. Uh, this game was provided to the channel as a review copy. One of my favorite things about doing the Dungeon Dive is being able to discover a game like this and share it with you because I think games like this are really, really cool. I love this game. I've had so much fun playing it over the last few days. Now, most of the games that I cover on the channel, I cover from the solo perspective and I am still covering this from the solo perspective, but I don't know if I would recommend this game purely for solo play because I think this game will really shine in the more kind of robust competitive version. But I've had fun playing it solo and I'm also really looking forward to playing this with a group of other players. So let's take a look at the back of the box. We'll talk a little bit about the game and then we'll kind of go into a little bit of explanation about how the game is played. We'll cover how to set up the game and get it going. And I'll talk about my thoughts throughout. So Stalagbite is from uh, Midlam Miniatures. Uh, this game was recently successfully had a successful crowdfund campaign and it should be shipping soon. And you can still pre-order this copy or, or a copy just like this from their website. And I will put a link in the description below. So this is kind of a feature complete, a, a, a prototype kind of a, a, a print run, a, a test print run version of the game. So everything that you see in this box is exactly how the backers will receive it. Uh, at least probably 99% of the stuff is exactly the same. At least that's what I was told. So Stalagbite, the Dwarven quest for gold and glory. Stalagbite is a fantasy quest game for one to six players. You take on the role of a dwarf hunting for gold and glory in the caverns beset by hazards, vicious creatures, and goblins. You will strive to discover new caverns, battle for glory, and challenge your fellow dwarves for the greatest hoard of treasure. So in the game, the players will be playing as a group of dwarves and they will be going into these caverns, uh, turning over rocks, investigating rocks and caves in order to find gold, in order to find treasure. They will be fighting different kinds of monsters to gain glory and they will be pushing their way further and further into the caverns and kind of pressing their luck. And at a certain time, the end game will trigger, at which point the dwarves need to make it either back to the original entrance or to a newly discovered exit. And they have to do all of that before one dwarf dies. And once the end game is triggered, a group of really nasty goblins comes into the caverns and starts chasing the dwarves and the goblins are really, really powerful. And so the, uh, the, the, the dwarves have to run from the goblins or hopefully maybe they can fight some of the goblins, but the goblins are, are really mean in this game. They're not little pushover goblins like in a lot of other games. Yeah, so this is a game all about going into caverns, finding treasure and killing monsters. And so here we have the rule book and the rule book is pretty good. I think it's pretty clear. You do get a nice overview of everything that will come in the game and we will take a look at all of this as we go. It does have some good art as well. And one of the things that this game really excels at is variety. And there is a lot of variety in the gameplay. At first, the game seems rather simple, but there are a lot of little moving mechanisms, a lot of little moving uh, parts and pieces that will keep everything interesting. And every time I've played the game throughout this last week, something really, really exciting has happened and it's just been a ton of fun. So let's start by uh, kind of maybe setting up the game to get an idea of how it is played. And so you have these one, two, three, four, five different cavern tiles, and these are double-sided. And depending on the level of the cavern you are going into, you will use one side or the other. And then there's also this lava cavern tile. Now, 
Uh, Kickstarter backers don't know about this. This is a surprise. So this is going to be included for free in all copies of Stalagbite. And it's kind of a little mini expansion that comes with its own cavern. This is a cavern that is a little more dangerous than the normal caverns. It comes with its own overlay tokens, and it also comes with its own deck of random events. And there is a chance that you can discover this lava cavern while you are exploring. So we have these caverns here, and then we have all of our dwarves there. So you, this is up to a six player game, so you can play one to six players. And each of the dwarves will be represented by one of the little color meeples here. Now Midland Miniatures, as the name suggests, is also a miniatures company. And so you can also buy this game with, I believe they are metal minis. And so you can get minis for the dwarves and for the monsters. And then each one of the dwarves will also have a corresponding D6 that they will use to roll. And you can have a special symbol that will allow you to gain critical hits. You will have an ax symbol that does damage, a blank symbol that is a miss, and then a shield and also a shield and uh, damage and then a double damage. And so you will be using this die to uh, accomplish a number of different things, mainly combat. There are also a number of different types of enemies here. And each of the enemies is represented also by their own D6 and their own group of uh, wooden miniatures or wooden meeples here. And we also have an information card. Now, I do wish that there were more information cards given in the game. And you'll kind of see why here in just a minute. So we have our level one creatures. These are the most, most common creatures that the dwarves will find. And these are the, the titular stalagbites. These are animated stalactites or stalagmites that come to life and try to bite the, uh, try to destroy the dwarves. And we have our smaller ones. So these are the level one stalagbites. And then we also have one level two stalagbite, which is a larger stalagbite. And then there's also a special golden stalagmite. And the golden stalagmite is kind of a pinata. And when the dwarves hit the golden stalagmite, they will get a lot of gold. And that's the main way you win in the game. There are two currencies. There's glory and gold. And whichever dwarf has the most at the end of the game is the winner. However, the dwarves need to work together to keep each other alive and to keep pressing into the cavern. So there's kind of a semi-co-op. There's not really a traitor, but if one dwarf falls, that automatically triggers uh, the end of the game. But each of the three main monsters will come with their information sheet and it'll tell you what happens when they roll their die or what face they roll for their special one damage, a save or a fail. And then it'll give you some more information such as their initiative, what, how their level corresponds to their movement, toughest and their glory rewarded when they are defeated. Uh, what happens when they are critically hit and then a special ability. So the stalagbites, they can gang up and that makes them more powerful. So if the stalagmites surround a dwarf, they become more powerful. And then the uh, second most powerful creatures here are these creeping jeepers. And again, there are small minis there, small meeples for the level one. And there, there is a level two creeping jeeper. And then the creeping jeeper also has its D6 here. And then it has that same information and some special things that they can do, such as slither and grasping. So they can grasp a dwarf and they can uh, land on top of a dwarf and have it constricted and keep attacking the dwarf over and over again. Pretty nasty. And then our most powerful creatures here are, are, are the uh, red hook horrors. And they can attack from further away because they can stretch. And again, we have our level one, our small guy, and our level two. And then you will have the same information there. Now we are also have this goblin hunting party and the goblin hunting party is kind of like a timer. And as the goblins are exploring the caverns, they are going to roll a D6. And anytime the leader rolls one of these hourglass tokens, then you draw a card from the goblin hunting party deck. And we'll take a look at that in just a minute. And if that deck ever runs out, then the goblin hunting party comes into the caverns and starts chasing the gob or starts chasing the dwarves around and that triggers the end game and so uh, unfortunately there is not an information card for the goblins and i'm not sure why i really think there should be an information card for the goblins but all of their information is here in the uh here in the rule book and pretty easy there is one special goblin and he is called uh, what is he? The Goblin Intruder, I believe. What was he called here? Let me look that up real quick here. 
Uh, we have the Goblin Lurker. So the Goblin Lurker is a special goblin and he can come out at any time. And he's very powerful because if he attacks the dwarves, then he will uh, poison the dwarf. And you have to draw one of these special poison cards that the dwarf will have to deal with. But then they also have their own D6 there for when you fight with the uh, goblins. So let me move all of these enemies off camera there. So those are the four different uh, enemy types that you will be facing off against. And then there are also a huge number of tokens and these tokens are randomizer tokens. And so I'm not going to pull all of them over here, but we have all of these rock tokens. And then we also have these cavern tokens. And there's about 50 of each of these. And these will get placed out. The caverns get placed out at the uh, entrances or the exits to each of the, or these are caves. They get placed out around the exit of the cavern. And then these rock tokens, they get placed on the rock spots on the tile. And then as the dwarves investigate and explore those, they will turn them over to reveal certain things such as secret doors or maybe levels going up or down or caves with monsters in them, caves with gems. There is the entrance to the uh, lava uh, cavern there or maybe some stalagmites there. We have a, a, a red hook horror guarding two pieces of gold. That is a level appropriate monster. That is a special relic that you can find. So all kinds of different things that you can find while you're exploring the caves. And then as you explore the rocks, you can find these incident tokens. And when you draw one of those, then you will have to draw from this large deck of random encounters. And there are all kinds of different random encounters. And these are all kinds of crazy things that can happen to the dwarves while they are exploring the caverns. You can find other relics. You can find more monsters. Uh, you can find stalactites that fall from the ceiling or stalagmites as well. And you can also find uh, various kinds of gold, various kinds of dwarven artifacts that will give you more glory or level appropriate treasure and so on. So there are all kinds of different things to discover while you are exploring these caverns. Let's see, what else do you get? You get uh, some wooden tokens here to keep track of your glory and your uh, damage. And you also get a whole bunch of different gems here uh, to uh, represent your gold and to represent your gems, which are worth five gold. And there are also these crystals and these crystals are magical crystals. And these uh, can be used when you discover them to heal a dwarf. And when once a dwarf is healed using one of these, then it becomes a regular gem. And so, like I said, the goal of the game is to get as many points as you can. And the points is a combination of your, your, your gems, your gold and your glory. And so you want to keep those going. Now, glory is also a kind of currency and the dwarves can spend that to reroll their dice and they can also spend it to vote to escape from the caverns because as soon as you've played the game for a certain amount of time a certain uh, a certain if you've explored up to two caverns then at the end of each round the dwarves will hold a vote and if enough votes go for exiting the caverns and that triggers the end game and so if you're doing really well you may want to vote with some of your glory to trigger the end game so you can get out and possibly win the game now there are two different modes to play you can play one-off games and if you play a one-off game you're just going to be exploring between two and five caverns and at the end of that time when the end game is triggered you will escape and you will uh, tally up uh, the, the, the score and see who wins or you can also play a campaign game and the campaign game you can actually start by just playing a one-off game and if you're having a lot of fun you can continue with a campaign and I think the campaign is pretty cool and it's probably the main way that I would play this game with others. It's not a narrative campaign. A campaign is just a series of six games and certain things carry over depending on the exit that you take. When you leave the caverns you might go up uh, a level or you might go down a level and so uh, every time you start the game you will start on a different level be between one and six and levels uh, the lower levels are easier and the higher levels are a little more difficult 
and uh, you will also keep track of your skills and your relics that the dwarves have found. The party leader will change from one game to the next, and you want to try to make it all the way to the end of the sixth game without a dwarf dying. And if you do that, then you get to face off against one of the three different campaigned in-game scenarios that get to play out. So really, really cool. A, a very simple campaign system that you can employ at any time while you are playing. So I, I like that a lot. So let's do a little setup and some gameplay examples here. Now, this is our goblin uh, hunting party card. And we will keep our goblin hunting party uh, cards on this card. Uh, one other thing we should mention real quick is, uh, actually we'll do that as we're, as we're setting up. So the first thing we'll do is we'll pick a couple dwarves here. So we'll play the white and let's do the uh, white and pink dwarf. Okay, so they're, they're the same, but you will have your little information card here. You will take your corresponding die and your corresponding meeple for each one of the dwarves. And this will tell you what you can do on your turn. You can take a movement action of up to three spaces, and then you can take one of these other actions and you can split your movement before or after your action. So the actions you can take is you can attack, you can climb out of a pit, you can investigate a cave or a rock in order to explore, you can rest to uh, discard damage, and then you can run and you can move an additional space. Additionally, there are some other things that you can do that don't take an action, such as gathering treasure, activating a crystal, or jumping over a pit. And then we also get a little summary of how combat works. So there's our two dwarves here. We have the pink dwarf and the white dwarf. And... Each dwarf will start with one glory, so we'll add a glory cube to each one of our dwarves. And then there is also here a large deck of relics. And there are four different relics, I believe. We have helms, we have axes, we have cloaks, and we have boots. And so each dwarf can have one of each. And so we'll mix these up and each dwarf will draw two and we'll choose to pick one. So we have our pink dwarf, we'll take those two and our white dwarf will take those two. Okay, so let's see here. We have the Axe of Counter and the Tricky Boots. Uh, this is an ongoing and this is a single use. So you may move one extra space on your turn, but then must uh, save against one damage. Okay, or while defending a dwarf icon or two axes count towards the counterattack. So this gives you a better chance of having a counterattack. I think the pink dwarf will take that relic there. And then also here, the Helm of Heroes ongoing. If a cave or a pit causes you to lose glory, reduce your loss by one glory. Or a Cloak of Whispers, when you discover layers, they are always empty. So that will allow you to discover layers that won't trigger monsters. Now let's go ahead and take that there. And then we also have here, we have a large deck of skills. And at the beginning of each game, you will draw two skills and you will get to choose one. And that also happens during a campaign. So the last game, the sixth game of a campaign, your dwarf will have uh, maybe four different relics and up to six different skills that they can use. And most of the skills, I think all of the skills, can only be used one time per game. There might be a couple that are ongoing, but most of them are one time per game. They don't get discarded though, but you just can't use them again until the next game. Now, I wish there was uh, another way to gain these during gameplay, and there's not. You only get one, if you're playing a one-off game, you will only ever have one skill. I think it would be really easy to implement a house rule where there will be other opportunities to gain skills while you are playing. Uh, maybe if you spend a certain number of glory or if you find a certain item, you might be able to. But uh, if you wanted to house rule something like that, you can. And I'm thinking of other ways to do that. But let's uh, give these a quick shuffle here and then uh, we can draw two and choose one for each of our dwarves. So there's the pink and the white. And we should say that the dwarves do start the game at toughness level seven. And this is the maximum number of damage a dwarf can take before they are uh, killed. Now you can discard both of your skills to raise your toughness by one. And you can go up to a toughness of nine. So throughout a campaign game, you may choose not to hone a skill in order to make your dwarf more powerful or in order to allow your dwarf to take more damage. Because 
a certain amount of damage does carry over from one game to the next. So that is something to keep in mind. So let's see here, we have a domino. Uh, when you investigate a rock token, reveal all the rock tokens in a straight line, interesting. Or recuperate, when you rest, discard an additional damage. This is a tricky card here because that can really come back and kind of bite you in the ass. That's kind of a pressure look. I'm going to take recuperate to allow my dwarf to take to uh, heal more damage. And for the white dwarf here, we have death blow and free blow. On your turn, automatically inflict one damage. That's good. When attacking, you may inflict one extra damage as long as, long as it would kill your enemy. I will go ahead and take death blow. I think that has a little more uh, power to it. Okay, so we have our dwarves. Our dwarves are set up now. We are ready to uh, start the cavern. So let me, uh, let's see here. Let me move these down a little bit and we will start setting up the cavern. So when you are playing your first game, you want to randomize the starting level. And to do that, you take all three of your main enemy dice, you roll those and you count up the number of damage. And that's the level that you start on. Uh, one, two. Okay, so we are starting on level two. So that does mean that we will have levels one and two are just the stalagmite enemies. So the uh, caverns are double sided and depending on the level, you will choose one side or the other. Uh, the rounded entrance uh, space there is used for odds and the square or the straight line entrance space is used for even. So we are at level two. So we will play with this side here. We will shuffle those up and we will choose one. Okay, so that is our starting. That is going to be our starting cavern. And then to our starting cavern, we will always take one cave that has a passageway leading to one other cavern. Okay, so we have that. And then we will take four other caverns because the caverns will all go around the exits. And we will shuffle those up. So we don't know what's what. And we will also take our entrance here and the entrance will go at that straight line. So where's my straight line here? So there is the entrance. And then we will place our caverns around like this. And then there are these rock spaces and each one of those rock spaces will uh, get a randomly drawn rock token. And those will be placed face down. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then if there are any skulls, you place a level appropriate enemy on those skulls. And so we have one level one stalagmite. So we will be facing off against stalagmites in this cavern. We'll take our st stalagmite uh, to our card there and our stalagmite D6. And then we can place our dwarves starting with the party leader. So we need to roll to see who our party leader is, whoever has the most uh, damage here, uh, one and then uh, one, but we also have a save, so that's more. So the uh, white uh, dwarf here will be our party leader, and they take the event die, and then the party leader gets to place his dwarf first. And you can place anywhere, any space that is connected to the entrance. So let's place our leader there, and maybe our pink dwarf wants to be over there. And then finally, what we will do is we will uh, take our goblin hunting party deck. And these are cards that uh, act as a kind of a countdown. And when we run out of these cards, then the uh, goblin hunting party invades the caverns and tries to destroy our dwarves. In a two player game, you will use seven of these. So let's uh, shuffle these up. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we'll place those there. And then finally, we have this uh, deck of randomized uh, cavern things that happen in a game. And so this is another thing that will just make every single game different. And let's shuffle this up here and draw one. So for this game, Hanging Caverns. When an ambush is rolled on the event die, the first creature placed is a stalagmite on a space adjacent to the party leader. So this will uh, cause kind of a stalagmite to fall from the ceiling onto next to our party leader whenever the ambush symbol is rolled on the event die. Okay, everything is set up and now we can start exploring the caverns. 
man, I, I, I love this game so much. There's so much randomness and just so many cool things to discover. It's really simple. It's really fast, fast paced. Uh, the turns are super quick and super fun. And so we do start with our party leader. This is the party leader token. At the end of each round, the party leader token is passed to the dwarf who has the most glory. And the party leader has a number of uh, a number of things that they have to keep track of. So they will be the one to roll the event die. Certain bad things can only happen to the leader. The leader does move first, so they have an opportunity to explore and gather more gold. And they also break ties and they also get to move the monsters. And so there is some strategy, a little bit of backstabbing, perhaps, depending on how your group is playing. One final bit of setup is we have to mark the entrance by this black triangle here. And so right now, if the goblins come, this is the entrance that the goblins are going to enter into when they start chasing us. As we discover other exits, then that might move. And then there's also this marker here. And when the end game triggers, we will place this on the exit that the dwarves have to uh, leave the caverns through. So the first part of the game is the leader will roll the event die and then they will do what it says here that can trigger uh, a, 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 an ability where the dwarves can gain glory. They can trigger an ambush. It can trigger a goblin hunting party countdown. It can uh, trigger a recovery action where the dwarves can heal. They can sense where they can reveal or they can look at rock tokens there or they can be surprised. In that case, the monsters will actually activate before the dwarves. So let's roll our event die here. And we rolled the A, so that is the symbol of Alberon. That's kind of like the uh, dwarves god there. And so the dwarven god has granted each dwarf a point of glory. And so we'll add a glory to each dwarf. And now it is the white dwarf's turn. So I can move and I can explore. So let's see. So right now, this stalagmite here is kind of trapped in this little area here by these rocks. It cannot move through there. So if I, as long as I keep one of those there, or all of those there, then the stalagmite can't get to us. However, we also can't get to it, or we also can't get to these other exits. I think my white dwarf, for his action, will uh, investigate this cave. We'll turn it over. And oh my gosh, already it is the um, the exit to the other cavern. And so now we will draw the next cavern here, making sure we keep on the same uh, side here with the straight line. And so we will uh, connect this cavern. Now, th the cool thing is you could connect it straight away to the cavern that you are in with a with a, a, um, a passageway, I'm trying to say passageway. But um, as you can see, I don't really have a room with this setup right now, especially since this is on camera. So we can use these connecting pieces. So we will replace this with that there. Also discovering the pa a passageway also gives the dwarf a uh, point of glory. So we'll add a point of glory there. And then you wanna try to keep the exits the same. And what I mean by that is, I'm gonna move that over there is we can count how many spaces away from the entrance this passage is. So we can go uh, from the entrance here, we will go counterclockwise one, and that's where this will match up. So let's find uh, this here, and then let's go counterclockwise one, and so the entrance will be right here. And so these two spaces are now adjacent. We can go one, two, three to enter into this new cavern here. Okay, but now we also need to populate this new cavern with all of the same things here. So we will draw five uh, random caves here and put those on the exits. So one, and we will also take some rocks. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we have one skull, which, be, which will be a level appropriate enemy, and that is a stalagmite. Okay, so now cavern two is set up. Now there might be other passages that we discover here that will lead to other caverns or possibly the lava cavern. If not, then this game will just be a two cavern game. So the games are pretty quick. Now I still have three points of movement. I could move, but I think I'm going to stay here 
and that'll be it. Okay, the pink dwarf. Uh, let's uh, go ahead and let's have the pink dwarf here. We'll investigate this rock. We will flip it over. And the pink dwarf has discovered a gem. Uh, I believe gems are worth five gold. So we'll take a gem here and we will add that to the pink dwarf. So the pink dwarf has pulled into the lead with uh, discovering that gem. Now it is the monster's turn and the monsters will move according to their rank. I am a rank one stalagmite. And the uh, party leader can move those monsters. So the rank one will move one space towards the nearest dwarf. It can't move towards the white dwarf here. So it will move towards the pink dwarf. And so we can move one like that. And now at the end of this round, because both caverns have been uh, discovered now, we can start voting to leave. And this is where maybe the, the solo player game does fall a little bit is you do kind of lose out on some of that voting, some of that blind bidding. But uh, we're just going to play where we're going to stay in the cavern here. And the party leader will move to the dwarf with the most glory, which is the white dwarf. So it stays there. And now we will roll our event die for our second round. And hey, we rolled the uh, countdown. So now we draw the top card from our goblin hunting party. And let's see what happens here. A lone goblin, immediate. A lone goblin moves into the cavern via the entry point. Okay, so the entry point is marked here. So we will add one lone goblin. When the goblin activates, it moves to attack the nearest dwarf. Okay, and goblins will move three. Goblins are very powerful. They are rank three monsters. So we'll discard this card now. And now we only have six cards left until the entire hunting party enters the cavern. Okay, so that was the event phase. Now it is the white dwarf's turn. I think the white dwarf here will investigate this rock here, turn it over, and he found a relic. Nice. So now I can go to my relic deck and I can draw a relic and I find the flea boots. Single use. You may jump a pit without rolling the dwarf die. Okay, so if you jump a pit, there's a chance that you can fall in the pit, but these are flea boots, so they allow me to uh, jump freely over pits. Very nice. And that is a single use. So I will add that to uh, my... Uh, my not my pink dwarf my white dwarf here I'm trying to get a little bit more stuff on the camera here for you guys but uh, so now my white dwarf has the flea boots and the cloak of whispers okay so now we remove that token and now I can move so I think I'll move one two over there and now it is my pink dwarf's turn so Monsters will start appearing more frequently, and so the dwarves do need to work together in order to kill the monsters so they can keep exploring. Because if one dwarf dies, then that triggers the end game. In a campaign, if a dwarf dies, that triggers the end of the campaign. And a campaign winner is only announced if the whole party of dwarves go through all six games. So I think I will, um, the pink dwarf is going to move one and let's do some combat. I will attack this stalagmite there. So I will take my pink D6. I will take the uh, brown uh, die there for the stalagmite and we will roll those. And okay, so I have done one damage, but the stalagmite blocked the damage. So that is, uh, that's it there. Okay, so that is the pink uh, dwarf's turn. So now it is the enemy's turn. And we go in initiative order. There is a really handy chart here that tells the initiative order. This is another thing that I think should be a card so you don't have to constantly look in the book. So just a few more information cards I think would be really helpful for this game. But the stalagmites go first. So let's see, the white dwarf is the leader. So he will keep the stalagmite here on the pink dwarf and the stalagmite will attack the pink dwarf. So the attacker can only uh, cause damage and the defender can only prevent damage. However, there is a chance that you can trigger a counter attack. Okay, oh, perfect. Okay, so the stalagmite rolled their blank, but the dwarf rolled their special symbol. So that means that now the dwarf gets to do a counter attack. And oh, two hits to, uh, to uh, nothing. So I take out the stalagmite and I gain a point of glory for doing that. Now, if I had rolled my dwarf symbol again and the enemy rolled a blank, that is a critical hit. 
And if you critical hit the stalagmites, bites, you crush them and you gain some gold. Super, super cool. As you start progressing through the campaign, if enemies do critical hits to the dwarves, then the dwarf has to draw a card from this critical hit deck that will cause certain things to happen to the dwarf. So like, once again, there is this deck here that can randomize some of the really cool elements of the game. Okay, so that was this stalagmites turn, but now we do have this nasty dwarf. And the dwarf will move towards, uh, not dwarf, but this goblin. It will move towards the closest. Let's see, one, two, three. One, two, three. So it is, it's uh, equal distance. So the leader can choose. The leader is going to cause the goblin to move down here towards the pink dwarf. And now the uh, goblin will attack. And the goblin does one damage. I don't defend against any. So the pink dwarf will take one point of damage. And I will add that to my toughness card. Okay, so now we are uh, about ready to start the game again. Actually, let's see, the pink dwarf killed the stalagmite, so he should have gotten that point of glory. So now the pink dwarf has three glory, the white dwarf has three glory. Uh, there is not a change of the party leader. So now we will roll our event die again, and each of the dwarves can heal one point of damage. So only the pink dwarf has damage, so the pink dwarf will heal like that. Now, I think the white dwarf here will go ahead and investigate this rock here. We'll flip that over and it is a stalagmite. Okay, so a stalagmite appears there. Okay, now I can still move maybe to get away from that stalagmite, but I think I'm going to move over here and possibly investigate this to maybe help combat this dwarf or this goblin there. So I will move there. Okay, let's see. It's the pink dwarf's turn. Should I attack the goblin? Yeah, let's try to get rid of that goblin. Okay, so pink dwarf here. Um, when you rest, okay, so nothing to help uh, fight this goblin here. So I will just attack. And oh no, it is a special to special. So those cancel each other out. So nothing happens. Uh, that would that would have been super cool if I could have critical done a critical hit on the goblin there. And so that is the pink dwarf's turn. The pink dwarf can't move. The pink dwarf could move through the white dwarf. Yeah, maybe I want to get out of here so I can go one, two, three, like that. And then it's the monster's turns now. So the stalagmite is already next to the pink dwarf. So that will, he will attack. All right, let's take our stalagmite dice here and... The stalagmite does one point of damage, but the pink dwarf does block it. And now the goblin is closest to the white dwarf, so it will move to the white dwarf and it will attack the white dwarf here. And it does a uh, two damage. I think that's two damage. Again, I wish there was an uh, information card, but let's see. Uh, special is two damage always. Okay, but I block one of it, so the white dwarf will take one point of damage. And now we still have the same amount of glory, so the white dwarf is still the party leader. So let's roll our leader die here. And we each get a point of glory for calling upon the favor of the dwarven god Alberon there. Okay. So the white dwarf here. Let's see here. Uh, I think the white dwarf will, when attacking, you may inflict one extra damage. So the, uh, the goblins can take up to three points of damage before they die. So that death blow... Probably isn't going to help much, but let's see here. Uh, White Dwarf will attack the Goblin, and it does two points of damage, but the Goblin blocks against one of it. So the Goblin now has one point of damage here, and I think the White Dwarf will move. One, two, three. And now it is the Pink Dwarf's turn. I want to uh, do some more exploration, although this could be a terrible decision. Let's explore this cave. And we, and we find a level appropriate monster. So we are at level two. And so that would be another stalagmite comes into play there. And so on. Let's, uh, I do want to say that maybe one of these rocks was one of these incident cards. And so let's see what the rest of these rocks are. There we go. So the white dwarf maybe would have explored that. And so then we come to our incident deck. And we would draw one of these and there are all kinds of cool, crazy things that might happen, such as a rock drop. A rock falls and lands on this space, add a new rock token. So you would take 
one of your face down rock tokens and maybe add a new one to that space. Or perhaps the awakening. The nearest two stalagmites blink and open their eyes, replace them with stalagmites. So if you had these stalagmites, then those would turn into creatures that you would have to fight. Unexpected results. Somewhere in the caverns, a rock falls on the party leader's head. They must defend against one damage. And so if that happened, the white, uh, the leader would roll their die and they would try to get one of those shields to save against one damage. A loud crash. The sound of breaking rocks triggers an ambush. Um, ambushes monsters will pour in from either layers or from different entrances and so on. So all kinds of really cool random things can happen while you are playing. There are all kinds of cool random things that happen when you reveal these goblin hunting party cards, such as at all costs, a commotion, a fearsome reputation. The dwarves may collectively discard glory equal to the number of dwarves to add a card to the hunting deck. Cover your tracks, lost goblins, war goblins, and the number of goblin hunting party cards changes throughout a campaign, making it feel like the goblin hunting party is getting closer to you or the goblins are pulling away from them. So really, really cool. And then there are all kinds of different things to discover while you are exploring the caverns and the rocks. And yeah, this is just a really fun game. I love this game so much. I've had so much fun playing it. I'm really, really looking forward to playing this to others with others because I think this game will really shine given that kind of competitive nature of the uh, uh, of the dwarves being greedy and wanting to get that gold. Now, when the end game triggers and the goblins start pouring in, at that point, the dwarves have to start moving towards whichever exit has been marked by the party leader. And each turn, they have to at least end their turn one space closer to that exit. They can, however, spend a point of glory to, to, um, to stay in the caverns longer in order to search for more treasure. So again, that is another example of where the glory can be used as a currency. And then if they ever discover this lava cavern, then you can refer to this lava cavern card and it'll tell you all of the special things that you can find in this lava cavern. And then it also has its own tokens there. So yeah, so that is Stalagbite. This game is great. I love this game. This is just the exact kind of game that I love on the Dungeon Dive. It's small, it's kind of unassuming. There are a lot of different variables, a lot of things that add variety to the game, such as the way that the game, uh, each game can be different by using these cavern cards. There's a whole bunch of different relics, a whole bunch of different skills. We have that large deck of random events that can trigger. We have random events that can trigger in the lava cavern. We have a random deck of critical hits that the god that the dwarves will have to deal with we have a random deck of different types of poison that the goblins might inflict upon the dwarves all kinds of really cool things the game is fast it's very easy to learn pretty easy to teach and yeah it's just a lot of fun it's simple and it's fun i kind of put this in maybe the same kind of category as something like dungeon quest and it's neat to see a game like this come out in 2024. So, all right, you guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on Stalagbite. We will talk to you later. Bye-bye.